So, I've had several people ask me how I set up gaming systems. Well, today, I'm going to show you how I set mine up. Stay tuned. And now I'm dead. So, like I just said, today we're going to be setting up a gaming PC. What I've done here is I've taken our e-waste gaming PC and completely loaded a fresh copy of Windows on it. And I'm going to go through the process that I typically go through when I set up a new gaming PC. Right now, this is a completely vanilla default install of Windows 10 that's updated to the latest version. Nothing has been added to it. This is going to, I'm going to go through the entire process of what I do to set a computer up for gaming. So, some of this stuff is going to be just visual and some of it's going to be performance. So some, is, some of it might actually be subjective. You may not like the way that I do certain things, and that's okay. This is the way that I set my gaming systems up. So hopefully you can learn something from that, and if there's anything that you can add to what I do, maybe I'll like your idea too. So please share it in the comment below and let me know some of the things that you do when you're setting up your gaming systems. Now, let's tear into this thing and see what we can do. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a completely default install of Windows 10. This is about as vanilla as it can possibly get. So I'm gonna go through and show you some of the things that I do to kind of clean up Windows 10 and not only make it look better, but also make it run better for gaming. So the first thing I do is kind of clean up the desktop. And the way I do that is usually, you know, like throwing away the Microsoft Edge icon. I go through and unpin a lot of these things from the taskbar. I'll usually leave the file explorer down there because I can actually use that. The search bar, I always get rid of that. So I go down to search and hit hidden. That'll get rid of the search bar to kind of give you a little bit more room on the taskbar. And then this stupid little weather thing right here, if you right click and you go to news and interests, you can turn that off also. So once I usually get the desktop kind of cleaned up, then I usually go into the start menu. So once we open the start menu here, I'm gonna in unpin essentially everything from here. There's a couple of things that I'll sometimes keep, but you know, most of this stuff is just worthless to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpin all these things right here. And as you can see, the two things that I kept were photos and the weather. And what I'll typically do is I'll usually make the weather large and then kind of move it down here. And then I'll take the photos and I'll resize the photos to wide and then move it down under the weather. And then what I like to do is I like to actually put the calendar up top right here. That's usually kind of how I like to set up my start menu. And then from there, Let's play around with some of the themes and colors and stuff like that. Go back to your desktop here and right click anywhere and hit personalize. And then from there here you can choose, you know, different backgrounds and things of that nature. Usually I already have a theme set up that will actually change my background. And then I go into colors and then from colors I choose, I like to do custom because I like the, the windows mode to actually be dark while the default app mode to be light. That's kind of the way I like it. I think that's really the traditional way that Windows 10 came when it was brand, brand new. And I just kind of grew to like it. So from there, you can kind of see that actually changes the color of the start menu too. Kind of makes it look a little darker. The light color, I don't know, I just don't like it personally. But you know, some people might. So if you do, then use it the way you like it. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into some services and these are some of the services that I recommend disabling in Windows 10, especially on systems. I mean, this is a gaming system, so it has an SSD drive in it. It's set up for gaming. So a lot of the services that I would disable on a lower end system, I'm not going to disable on this one, but let me show you primarily what I'm going to change. So if you click on start here, I'm going to type services. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And then from there, I'm going to scroll down. And the first one I'm looking for is connected user experience and telemetry. So we're going to scroll down here until we find right here, connected user experience and telemetry. We're going to open this up. We're going to hit disable and we're going to stop it. And then typically I'll hit apply and okay, but lots of people complain that I don't have to hit apply, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I don't know, I like to. <laughs> So the next one I'm going to do is if go ahead and look for device management wireless application protocol. So we're going to scroll down right here, device management wireless application protocol. And we're going to open that one up and it's set to manual. I'm going to go to disable 
and there we go. And then we're stopping that one. Okay, so the last one that I'm gonna disable is I'm gonna scroll down here into the S's and we're gonna disable system main. And primarily the reason why I disable system main on, even though this computer has an SSD, the reason why I disable it is because it doesn't do anything with an SSD. And I really don't need it running in the background. So even though I don't have a disk usage issue on this one, I still typically disable system main on most systems that I'm actually running. So these services are primarily just, you know, Windows telemetry services, aside from system main, which I just think is a useless service altogether. But these will actually disable a lot of the telemetry that Microsoft uses to send back and be able to kind of spy on you on your system. We're going to go more into telemetry a little bit later, though, so stay tuned. So let's get back to it. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the task scheduler and there's some things we wanna kill in there. So go ahead and hit start and type in task and go ahead and open the task scheduler up. And then from here, we're gonna open up task scheduler library. We're gonna go to Microsoft and then we're gonna open up Windows and you should get a whole bunch of stuff opening here. And we're gonna be looking for two things specifically. The first one is gonna be application experience right here. This is essentially just Microsoft telemetry and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on it here and hit delete folder Alternatively what you can actually do is you can go to the specific things right here and you can actually disable them And if you wanted to go through and disable all these you can do it that way, too I just delete the folder because honestly I want to <laughs> I don't have any, any other reason than that, uh, but you can disable it. It'll give you exactly the same result, but um Either way, if you decide that you want to enable this at some point in the future, you can always go back and enable it. If you delete it, eh, you can't do that. But anyway, the next one we're going to look at is Customer Experience Improvement Program. So that's right down here. We're going to click on that. And same thing, just go ahead and disable the specific tasks themselves. And then from that point, we can move on. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and install our GPU drivers. And to do that, I really like to use the NV Clean Install. I did a video on this program a while back, the NV Clean Install program. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for it. And I'll also tag the other video here if you'd like to watch that one. Honestly, ever since using that program in that video, I use this to install my drivers all the time. It's an amazing program, I really love it. So we're gonna go ahead and install the drivers on this system, and I'll kind of go through the process of installing them again with you. So let's do that right now. So what we wanna do is we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and run this program. And then once it starts, it's actually gonna to search to find the latest drivers for your system itself. And it's gonna go ahead, it found the drivers. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And it's gonna ask you which sections of these drivers to install. I typically recommend the physics and the HDMI audio, but your use case might be a little bit different. Go ahead and watch the video that I did on this one and I go into more detail on this stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and hit next and it's actually gonna build the installer at this point. And it's gonna take a second for this installer to set up. Okay, now that that's finished, I'm going to go ahead and what I like to do is disable telemetry and advertising. This is just for the installer itself. This isn't for the drivers themselves. Um, also, I like to do a clean installation and I also like to install the NVIDIA control panel. So go ahead and make sure you check that one there. And then on expert tweaks, I like to disable the driver, driver telemetry. Go ahead and click that and then hit next. And it's actually gonna go through this portion. It's actually gonna install the um, NVIDIA control panel. And then from there, it's gonna move on to actually installing the driver itself. Okay, so from this point, you just push the install button and the driver should go through the regular NVIDIA install process. So at this point, I'll go ahead and hit the install button and install the driver. However, as soon as I do that, it's gonna mess up my screen capture. So I'm gonna have to stop it for a second so I can install this driver. And then I'll go ahead and get right back to it with the next step. So let's do that now. Okay, so after you get your GPU drivers installed, the next thing I would do is install your browser. And I typically like to use Chrome, but you know, whatever browser you wanna use, that's fine, that's fine. Even Microsoft Edge isn't a horrible browser. I mean, it's not my favorite for sure, but it's definitely better than Internet Explorer was. But whether or not you use Chrome, Firefox, or Edge, either one's fine. Just set up the browser that you typically would like to use, and then we can move on to the next step. We have to actually make this one default. So once the browser is installed, then I'll go ahead and show you how to make it default. 
Okay, so here we go. We've got Chrome installed now. And from here, if you want to make your browser default, there's a couple of different ways. Most browsers, if you go into the settings, you'll actually have a section in the settings that says make default. And if you click on that, it'll open up your default app section. But alternatively, what you can do actually is you can click on start, click on this little settings cog right here. And you can actually, from here, you can actually kind of go into your default apps as well. So if you click on default apps right here, here's your main default apps. And obviously the web browser shows Microsoft Edge, of course, because you know, Microsoft hasn't had issues with antitrust in the past, but you know, we'll, I digress. <laughs> so we click on that and we go ahead and select Chrome. And of course, Microsoft says, are you sure? You know, I find it ironic that Microsoft doesn't ask you if you're sure if you're switching back to Edge. It's only when you're switching away from Edge. Hmm, I wonder if that's anti-competitive. I don't know, what do I know, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit switch anyway, so it's gonna switch it to Chrome. Now our default browser is Chrome. And from this point, you can kind of go through, you can log into your Chrome account if you want to, you can change your homepage, you can do whatever you want to do there. I'll go ahead and leave that one up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this now, and we're gonna move on to the next thing. And the next one would be, obviously, if this is a gaming system, we need Steam, don't we? Or at least we need some kind of a game installer. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Steam here. And Steam typically installs relatively quickly. It once it does its first install, then it actually goes through and does its first update, which is the majority of what Steam is. Honestly, the installer doesn't really install Steam. It just installs the installer that you then use to install Steam, if that makes any sense. I think it does, but... Okay, so once Steam is set up, then you need to log into your account. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera here. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, once you get Steam installed, this is what you should be left with here. And as you can see, I have my whole list of games, but if you click on any of these games, you'll notice it says stream. And that's because it's actually detecting the games on another system on my network. However, I still have all these games installed on this system. What I typically do is if we're gonna go, let me go ahead and open this up real quick. And if you look at, I've got a D drive here. And in this D drive, I actually have all of my Steam games loaded on this drive right here. So all the games that are normally on the system or on this drive. However, what we can do is we can easily tell Steam to actually look at another direction for its install location, and then it will actually automatically detect that all these games are actually installed already. So the way we do that is we come up here, we click on Steam, and then we're gonna go down to Settings. And then from Settings, we're gonna go down to Downloads right here. And then from Downloads, right here, this first button right here where it says Steam Library Folders, go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, the default is in your Programs File Directory. But we're gonna go ahead and add a folder. And for this folder, I'm gonna say D Drive, Games, then hit Select. And then that folder right there, I'm actually gonna make that folder my default folder. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and close all this right here. And as you can see, now it sees these games as already being installed on the system. The reason why I typically do this, especially on this system here, is because it's a pain in the butt every time I reload the system to have to download all these games back from Steam servers. I mean, there's several hundred gigabytes of games on the system and it takes a really long time to install these games. In fact, GTA 5 typically takes about an hour and a half to download and I just don't have that kind of time to wait. So what I do is I actually keep an old spinning disc on this system and I keep all my Steam games on that spinning disc and it doesn't seem to affect the performance of the games that much. They seem to run just as good on the spinning disc as they did on the SST. So it's a good way to repurpose an old spinning disc and it saves me from having to install these games every time I reload the system. So now let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so once Steam's installed, the next program that I typically like to set up is MSI Afterburner. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up right now, and we're going to go ahead and set Afterburner up. And now the purpose for Afterburner, is, it, has, it has more to do with just overclocking your video card. I mean, a lot of people know MSI Afterburner is the program that you typically use to overclock your video card. However, what I use it for in a lot of cases is to actually do benchmarks and see frame per second and stuff like that on the system. So that's the primary use that I make for it so it's a program that's always on my computer for the mostly for the purpose of making these videos honestly and it also comes in handy when you're tuning games and things like that to have MSI Afterburner installed so you can kind of see what's going on while you're inside the game 
Now, I'm not gonna go into real big detail on how to set up MSI Afterburner for showing your frame per second and stuff like that in games. However, if that's something that interests you, let me know in the comments and I'll do a special video just on MSI Afterburner and how you can use it to benchmark games and be able to see your frame per second while you're playing them. One of the games that was the toughest to set up with MSI Afterburner was Counter-Strike because of their, kind of their ban on third-party applications being able to show overlays However, there's a way to get around that. If that interests you, then let me know and I'll do an extra video on it. Let me know in the comments below. Let's go on to the next thing. All right, now that we have MSI Afterburner installed, we can move on to the next thing. And typically what I like to do at this point is this is usually the majority of the apps that I'm gonna use on a gaming system. So from this point, I'm actually gonna go through and just kind of clean things up a little bit. Like for instance, some of the things that I installed, I'm gonna to wanna to actually put them on my start menu. Like, you know, I wanna put my browser here. I wanna go ahead and put Steam here. So I'm just gonna drag these into place and put them in the spots that I want them to be in. And then I can find them later on. And some of the things I like to do, if you ever want to change the size of an icon, go ahead and right click the icon and you can resize it to any size you want. So if you wanna put things in a specific order, you can do it that way. And another thing I like to keep on my start menu too, which isn't up here for some reason, is the NVIDIA control panel. Oh, it's right there. All right, so we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna go ahead and hit pin to start. And then from there, there's our NVIDIA control panel. So speaking of the NVIDIA control panel, that's the next thing we should set up. So go ahead and open that up. Go ahead and agree to your terms and conditions here. And then once this opens, there's a couple little tweaks that I like to do in, in the NVIDIA control panel just to give me a little bit more performance in the graphics card. So we're gonna go to manage 3D settings here. And then from there, we wanna scroll down to power management. And then from power management mode, it says optimal power. I don't wanna say power, I want maximum performance. There we go. And then I'm gonna scroll down here to also texture filtering quality. And it's set to quality right here. And honestly, I haven't seen a big difference in changing this, so I like to set this to high performance. Usually gives you a couple frames a second. Doesn't make a big difference, but it's a difference that has very little effect to your gaming experience. So I would recommend changing it. And then from that point, we go ahead and hit apply. Takes a second for NVIDIA control panel to do its thing, and once it does, we can go ahead and close it. And now the next thing that I wanna do in the start menu is I like to change these icons right here. I don't like the way that Windows sets these up by default, so if I right click here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit personalize this list. And what I like to do is I like to turn File Explorer on and leave settings on. Everything else I turn off. And then go ahead and close this, and as you can see, kinda of cleans it up a little bit, makes it so it's a little bit more useful than it was before. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go into settings now, and then I wanna go into power settings. And to go to your power settings, what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually search for power settings right here. And then the first thing that I like to do is disable sleep. Um, you may like to leave sleep mode on, but I typically like to turn it off. I also stop the screen from going to sleep too. You don't have to, I mean, honestly, it's whatever you want at this point. This is, this is all preference. When it comes to these settings right here, these power management settings, this is all based on your own preference. This is the way I like to keep my computer, but you might wanna keep yours differently. I want my system to be awake the entire time I'm using it. This system here, when I'm not using it, it's turned off. So so it's not running all the time, so I don't really think the power management settings are really that relevant to this one. So let's move on and see what else I would change here. So the next thing that I would do is on this performance and energy, I usually tack this all the way up to high performance there. And then once I do that, I go ahead and click on additional power settings. And then from here, typically by default, it's set to balanced. And I like to change this to high performance. And then from that point, you can actually close this window and close this one. Now, the next thing that I like to do in Windows 10 is if you come down to the bottom right-hand corner here and click on this, you'll notice that you have a lot of notifications that show up here. And what I like to do is if you click on this link at the top that says manage notifications, it will actually open this screen up and I would go through and uncheck all of these. And this will actually get rid of some of the annoying notifications that Windows pops in your face all the time. It doesn't get rid of all of them, but it gets rid of the majority of them. So once you do that, you can go ahead and close this. And then at this point, I wanna go ahead and open up Windows Security. 
This is essentially what used to be called Microsoft Security Essentials, and then it got renamed to Defender, and now they just call it Windows Security. I just recommend this as a basic antivirus. I've had really good luck with it in the past, and I recommend it to everyone to use this one. I typically don't recommend aftermarket antiviruses because you know they cost you money and they just take system resources away. This one actually seems to work pretty good, and it protects you from viruses, which is kind of its job. So let me show you some of the things that I'll do in here. So the first thing I would do is the account protection dismiss. I don't recommend uh, setting up a Microsoft account. I think it's a waste of time. So I would go ahead and dismiss that. And then app and browser control, go ahead and dismiss that one also and hit yes. And then from here, it says we want to set up OneDrive. Well, honestly, I don't even want OneDrive on my computer. So while we're thinking about it, let's go ahead and hit start and type control panel. And then from here, we're gonna to go to uninstall a program. We're gonna select OneDrive and hit uninstall. And go ahead and hit yes once the security prompt comes up. Now, what you're gonna find is you're probably gonna spend a lot of time uninstalling OneDrive because Microsoft just reinstalls it once you uninstall it, which honestly is kind of annoying, but it's primarily the reason why I uninstall it. If I want something gone, I want it gone. And if you keep forcing it on me, then I don't want it even more. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, go ahead and dismiss that because we already set it up. So Windows Security is pretty much where we want it to be. The next program that we're gonna set up is a program called O&O Shut Up. And this program right here, I don't have a lot of experience with it. I used to use another program to go through and take a lot of the telemetry out of Windows 10, but that program isn't in support anymore. And I couldn't find a place where I could recommend you guys download it. So I looked around and this program right here usually has a lot of really good reviews. The people that use it love it a lot. So I'm still playing with it, so I don't know how well it works. So just keep that in mind before you use it yourself. Uh, luckily though, this will actually create restore points, so it is undoable. If you decide that this program messes everything up, then you can actually undo what this program does. But let me show you how to set it up. So what we do is I went ahead and download the installer. The installer is just a portable program. You don't have to install it on the system. You just run the installer straight from the download. And then it gives you essentially all of these different settings that you can turn off. Most of them are actually turned on right now. Some of them are still turned off. What I would recommend doing is if you go into the actions menu here, you can actually put apply only recommended settings. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna go through and it's going to only check the settings that are the most recommended in the app. It doesn't disable a lot of things that could possibly hinder your experience using Windows 10. The first thing it asks you is if you want to create a restore point, I would recommend doing so. Let's go ahead and hit yes. It creates a Windows restore point. And then from that point, it goes ahead and checks all the things that it would recommend to check. So as you can see, there's a lot of things checked now that weren't before. So hopefully you have good luck with this program. If I have any issues with it, I'll go ahead and make sure to share those in the future. But as of right now, I've used it on a few systems and I've been really happy with it. I actually may switch over to this program from the one that I used to use before. All right, so now the only things left to do is grab some of the icons that got thrown on your desktop from installing programs, throw them in your recycle bin, go ahead and empty the recycle bin, and this system's ready to start playing some games. Now, as you can see, the way I set up my systems are probably different than the way some people do. I like my systems to be as stripped down as possible but still be functionable on a daily basis. So I don't actually strip them down as much as is capable of stripping down. However, we may have a video in the future of us actually doing that and seeing if it makes much of a difference. But in the meantime, this is how I typically set my systems up. I like to use as few programs as possible. I know that there's some people out there that like to use third-party antiviruses as well as malware programs and things of that nature, but I typically recommend against using those. I feel that every program you add to Windows is just gonna add to the resources that you're taking away from what you wanna do to it. So I typically keep my computer as stripped down as I possibly can. And honestly, this computer's main life is to play games. I don't even have an office suite on this thing because there's no reason for it. This computer is for playing games and that's it. Your computer might be a little bit different. You may need to do schoolwork or regular work on it as well as playing games. And if that's the case, you're obviously gonna 
to need more programs than I use on mine. However, hopefully what I do with this system kind of helps you guys decide what you're going to want to do with your system. If there's anything different that you would do, please share it in the comments below. I'm really interested in how you guys set your systems up. Honestly, a lot of the things that I do today, I've learned from listening to you guys. So if this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day. All right. Are you still here? Go, I'm gonna play some games, bye.